Okay, then we're going to look at uh, refractive errors, specifically myopia. Then later on, we're going to take time and look at a uh, hyperopia. So myopia is a basically a very common um, refractive error uh, where a person ends up uh, seeing objects that are nearer to them being very clear, but um, objects that are very far away being um, blurry. Okay, so the further away uh, an object is, the less clear it is or the blurrier it is. So this condition is also called um, nearsightedness by the fact that actually you're able to just to see clearly only objects that are near. So myopia is a very um, common kind of uh, refractive error. So it, it affects a significant percentage of a population. Uh, that said, um, it is estimated that um, over 20% of the world, the entire world population has myopia. However, the prevalence varies from uh, different continents to different con continents uh, with Asia Pacific having the highest prevalence of um, myopia. So close to 50% of the population actually uh, suffering from myopia of a kind. So it often worsens during childhood and adolescence. And then myopia is basically common um, uh, in families. So it runs in families. So how does this thing actually occur? So normally it can occur in three ways. The first one is when you have a very strong re refractive uh, index on your lens. So your index is actually refracting or bending light too much. Okay, so it bends the light and makes the image for be formed uh, before it gets to the retina. Okay, so when you're using, when you're having a, 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 a lens with a high refractive index, that is um, one of the problems that we might get. The second, uh, uh, possibility is if you're having a long uh, or a, a, a bigger eye globe, okay, uh, compared to a normal one. So what that means that it will take a longer time or a greater distance for the for the light to actually be bent on the focal point in the retina. Therefore, most of the time the light will be focused uh, somewhere just before before the retina or in front of the retina. Then the third uh, possibility is the distance between the lens and the retina, if that distance is quite long, then um, there's a chance that the light might actually be converged uh, before the retina. So those three points, um, having a greater refractive power, uh, a, a, a bigger eye globe or a longer eye globe, and the distance between the lens and the retina being a bit longer. So all these three things, so all these three possibility will ultimately lead to one, um, one consequence, that being that the image will be formed in front of the retina, okay? And because of that, you will need to compensate so that the image actually is focused at the retina. So we do this uh, by doing what? By actually trying to uh, come nearer to objects. So one, you'll try to bring the object closer to your eye, or two, you personally will try to move closer to the object to be, to be able to see it. And this is because near vision is accurate and clear while the normal or distant vision is blurred, okay? That's why people bring books closer to, the, to their eyes or if they are seated in class, they have to come in front. So the risk factors, um, uh, we have... Um, genetics that has been closely linked and that's why we say that it actually has been found to run in families so if one of your parents is uh, myopic then there are chances that um, the kids will be myopic and that the risk is even higher if both of the parents actually are myopic then environmental uh, conditions this has recently been found actually to some studies indicate that um, lack of time spent outdoors and you are maybe just working uh, looking at images near, like those people working on their computers for so long, not getting time to actually go out, then there are chances that they might actually develop myopia. So we have different types of myopia. We have axial myopia, which is as a result of the anterior posterior length of the eyeball being more than normal. And I think we talked about this. Curvature myopia, so when the curvature of the cornea or the lens is more than normal, that therefore will increase the refraction. Index myopia, this is when the refractive index of the different media, especially the lens, is quite stronger. So that can lead to index myopia. 
then developmental myopia, which is uh, characterized by an abnormal long eyeball, uh, but this is from birth. Then you have the simple myopia, which is um, the commonest type and progresses during childhood and adolescence. And it can be because of several reasons like um, trauma or ocular uh, structures, or uh, trauma to ocular structures. Then you have pathological myopia, which is a degenerative or progressive problem, uh, normally with hereditary tendency, but uh, it might also be because of other conditions that are affecting the eye leading to um, myopia developing. So myopia is diagnosed um, using very standard um, eye exam tests, uh, classical example, visual acuity test, where somebody actually uh, is put six feet away from uh, where we have the signal lens chart and told to be able to uh, look at the, the figures that are there. Then we have a, a retinoscopy. Uh, this is um, an examination of the retina and actually trying to see uh, where the light actually bounces on the, on the retina. So if light is shown and it, <coughs> it is actually converged uh, in front of the retina, we're able to see this. And other tests like a visual field can also be useful. So the clinical picture, obviously the first one is a uh, far away objects will be a bit blurry but uh, closer ones will be very clear. Uh, these people tend also to have headaches, eye strain, squinting, and squinting is very common, as you can see. So somebody will try to squint, actually to try and, and uh, accommodate so that they can actually see uh, uh, far away objects. Blinking excessively and also tiredness when driving or playing sports or looking more than a few feet away. So you, you basically get tired. So this condition corrected. So the concept of correction of myopia is very simple. It's by use of a bicon biconcave lens. And this is a biconcave lens. And what it does is it, it, it bends the light, but it diverges the light. And by so doing, that means by the time the light is hitting the lens or the cornea, um, it, it will actually push where the, the, the focal point is supposed to be. So by slightly diverging the light, so that by the time it is refracted or converged by the by convex lens, it actually gets to the point of the retina. So that concept is used for in prescription lenses. So like eyeglasses, so they will use eyeglasses that, are, that have this kind of lens. So this is a simple and a safe way to sharpen the, uh, the vision and also contact lenses that also uh, diverge this light as lightly. However, if uh, the lenses or the, um, the contact lenses don't work, if the glasses or the contact lenses don't work, then uh, refractive surgeries can be used. And here, <clears throat> laser beams are normally used to reshape the cornea, which results in decreased uh, nearsightedness. So there's a common one called LASIK, which is laser-assisted uh, in situ keratomeliosis. So that basically means that a laser is shown and into the eye to remove the inner layer of the cornea and that flat flattens it a bit and the dome is not that curved, okay? So therefore reducing the, 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 the refraction a bit. Uh, then the other one, which is almost the same, which is laser assisted uh, subepithelial kera kerato um, keratectomy. Basically, this one is used to reshape the cornea the same way by using laser but here it focuses on the outer layer, but ultimately it flattens its curve and then replacing the epithelium. Then we have photorefractive keratectomy. This one is similar to LASIK, but the only thing is that um, the epithelium is removed completely and uh, it is not replaced, but uh, normally it will just grow uh, back uh, naturally. So as you can see all these, all these uh, surgical interventions, they're working on the, on the cornea and trying to reduce um, uh, to reduce the uh, the curvature and therefore the refractive power, okay. But the others uh, like uh, fake uh, procedures which are uh, work on the cornea uh, on the lens itself. So thank you very much.